Boyd's is an algorithm developed by Craig Reynolds in 1986. It aims to emulate the flocking behavior of birds by applying three simple rules. Separation, alignment, and cohesion. In order to run the simulation, all we need to do is calculate the velocity of each Boyd based on these three rules. Once we have the three resulting velocities, we can add them together and clamp the results. That'll give us all the information we need to keep the Boyd's in the yard. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Before we dive into the final simulation, let's first take a quick detour to learn each rule and understand how we may go about implementing it in Unity. The first rule, divorce, uh, I mean separation, states that each Boyd must steer away from nearby Boyds. If there are multiple Boyds in the separation range, then the current Boyd needs to steer clear of all of them by applying a weight inversely proportional to the distance between them. You can see that clearly in this picture. The closest Boyd is influencing the velocity of the current Boyd more than the other ones. To implement this in Unity, we can start by creating a loop to go through all the Boyds. In each iteration, we calculate the distance from the current Boyd to the other Boyds. If this distance is less than some separation range, then we can keep track of that information in a weighted velocity variable. Once we iterate through all the Boyds, we can divide the total velocity by the number of Boyds in the separation range to get the actual separation velocity. Finally, we can multiply this velocity with a custom variable that we can use to fine tune just how antisocial the Boyds are. Let's see the results in action. I've gone ahead and made a debug view to help us visualize the Boyds separation range. It's the one colored in red. We can increase the separation factor and see how the Boyds behavior changes. The second rule, alignment, states that each Boyd must steer towards the average heading of local flockmates. In this example, we can see that the current Boyd's direction is facing north, while most of the other Boyd's in its alignment range are facing northwest. In order to follow this rule, the current Boyd should change its direction to face northwest as well. To implement this in Unity, we can start the same way we did with the separation algorithm, by creating a loop to go through all the Boyd's. We can, once again, check to see if the other Boyd is near the current Boyd by measuring the distance between them. In this case, we want to keep track of the other Boyd's velocity. After the loop is completed, we can divide the resulting velocity by the total number of Boyd's inside the alignment range to get the actual alignment velocity. And just like before, we can scale it with the Boyd's alignment factor, a variable that can be customized in the editor. Let's see the results in action. For reference, the green debug circle represents the Boyd's alignment range. As we increase the alignment factor, we can see that the Boyd's align with their flockmates more quickly. And of course, we can also play around with the Boyd separation factor to see how that changes their behavior. The third and final rule, cohesion, states that each Boyd must steer towards the average position of its local flockmates. In this example, we can see that the average position of its flockmates is to the left of the current Boyd. So in order to follow this rule, the current Boyd should change its direction to face more westward. To implement this in Unity, we start by creating yet another loop that iterates through all the Boyds. If the other Boyd is within the cohesion range, then we want to keep track of its position. After the loop, we want to divide the total position by the total number of Boyds in the flock to get the average position that the current Boyd needs to head towards. Finally, we can capture the direction by normalizing the vector and multiply it by our cohesion factor before returning the result. Now that we've implemented all three phases, we can stimulate, <coughs> I mean, simulate our Boyds. And of course, we can play around with all three variables to see how the Boyd's behavior changes.
At this point in the coding experiment, I noticed that the simulation was starting to slow down. My goal was to simulate thousands of voids at once, but our current implementation starts to lag after just 200. Now look, I'm no performance expert like Ace Rolla or Simon Dev. Heck, I'm not even that good at Unity. In fact, this is my very first Unity project. But even with my lack of experience, I could clearly see two ways to optimize our simulation. And the first change, which may have been obvious to some of you already, is to update the algorithm to run it in one loop instead of three. This makes our code harder to read, but it greatly decreases the number of checks being performed. The second change is to update the void prefab. Currently, we're using a sphere, and it has more than 500 vertices. So let's instead create a quad with a triangle shader. Using this new prefab will reduce the number of vertices that Unity has to render for each void by a factor of 100. The two optimizations did help, but not by much. They only increased our void limit by about 100. So now, instead of being able to simulate 200 voids, we can simulate 300 to 400 voids at once before the frame rate starts to dip below the AAA industry standard of 30 FPS. Still not satisfied with my performance improvements, I decided to take a look at Sebastian Lag's coding adventure. From watching this video, I learned that there are two ways to further optimize the Boyd simulation. The first approach was to split the region into cells and only run the algorithm on voids in neighboring cells. The second approach was to run the algorithm in a compute shader. Implementing both of these would yield the optimal result. But, as evident from my channel name, that's not the type of engineer I am. So, I decided to go with the second approach. It was just pure coincidence that the code for this was actually available on Sebastian's GitHub. Now, to be honest, I'm still a little confused about how compute shaders work, but the general approach goes something like this. First, we set up a struct that contains the format of the data we wish to pass into the compute shader. In each game loop, we create an array buffer with the information specified in the struct and pass it along to the compute shader. The compute shader runs the core algorithm in parallel on the GPU and inserts the results back into the same buffer. Once it's run, we can parse the data from the buffer and update our void's position and rotation. Finally, we make sure to release the data from the buffer in preparation for the next iteration of the loop. The main goal of this approach is to run the computationally expensive calculations on the GPU. And with this final update, we should be able to simulate 2000 voids at 40 frames per second. That's a 10x improvement from our original implementation. But for the sake of keeping my computer's temperature below 200 degrees Celsius, I think I'll stick with simulating 1000 voids for the rest of this demo. And yeah, I think that's going to be it for this coding experiment. If you made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.